Hey everybody, this is Diane. I don't know if this is going to be a successful video or not, but I'm going to do a little bit of playing and I thought I'd turn the camera on. You can see my desk is a disaster, but before I went to bed last night, I came up here and just I just wanted to play with some stamps. And so I have the little clear stamps that I use just kind of tossed up here waiting to be cleaned. Um, I did use a couple of stencils. I've got stamps over here. I've got all my inks and my brushes and blenders over here. And I've got some scissors and various papers, sorry, all around me to um, work with. So I did that last night before bed and I want to do a little more of it today. Um, so we're here to do that. Let me show you what I ended up doing last night. So I'm playing with um, some stamps, as I said. Some of them are new ones. Um, so this is an older stamp that I've had for a while. And then I added these mushrooms. Um, they're not new, new. I mean, I've, I've had them for a few months, but I've not done much with them, so I thought they were fun. I took a glassine envelope that I've had. Um, not glassine. Is it? It's a, it's heavier. It's like a waxed craft bag, craft envelope, and um, I just did some collagey stamping on it. And this is a piece of vintage um, tracing paper, this little notepad. The edges of it are all yellowed. Um, I got this at a antique store a few years ago. So I really had fun doing some stenciling and stamping on this. And I didn't make it all the way to the edge, although I don't want to really cut off that yellowed edge, but I think I'll have to because I didn't really need it to be that wide. These pieces, I don't really have a plan for them. I just am playing and I will add these to my stash. And what I'd really like to do with these is, for a lot of these pieces, is layer and collage them and just have a lot of fun adding these to journal pages somewhere down the road. So here's a piece of vellum with a lady and I don't, yeah, you can see it. The this music is stamped in more more mustard is the name of the color of ink from Stampin' Up! And then I stamped that little labely thing there. I had fun doing this library card pocket. I mean, nothing on the back. And then this says highlight of the week. These are totally unrelated things. There's a bus ticket and some dress forms and um, umbrella. And again, just a scrap of paper, coffee dyed paper, and I did some stenciling and stamping. And then I took vellum and I did some inking on the vellum and some stamping. And I liked this blue I'm, I don't even know. It's like a technical drawing. Oh, it's a bicycle. It's a patent drawing of a bicycle, and I stamped it in um, a Stazon. I think it was Stazon blue, or maybe it was this. I don't remember. But then it looked kind of weird having the blue down here, so then I just inked blue all the way around in places, and I really like the way it looks with the vintage photo, so I think that's a nice piece, and I'll I'll add an eyelid or something for interest and I'll attach this to a page somehow. I saw an idea for this on Pinterest, um, someone's journal page, and this is a piece of vellum and I used this ledger stamp from my Tim Holtz set that has the farm animals. It has this ledger piece too. And then I just took a piece of burlap and inked some black around it and sewed it to that just for something interesting. And then I stamped on vellum and cut the pieces out and I will layer them on something. This would be good in a fairy journal because this butterfly has a fairy in the middle and a fairy here and a fairy there. These stamps are so cool. 
There's another. That's a Tim Holtz stamp. It's the same stamp set that this came in. And this dragonfly has a bird here in profile and a bird here. And then this is a bird too. There's the beak and the wings and the tail. And just some script stamped in black and another of the Tim Holtz. So I'm just going to stamp a bunch of stuff and have it ready so that when I make a journal I can just use these, add these and layer them and have a lot of fun with them. So what will I start with? I brought some vintage paper over here with me today. I have this from August 1960 and it's just a little pad, memo pad, but it's dated at the bottom. So I thought this would be <coughs> sorry. I thought this would be fun to use. So some of the stamps are the Stampers Anonymous stamps that I showed you that I got recently. Um, and this is the one with the mushrooms. And I believe this came from an Etsy shop called Paper Game. Um, oh, I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. But I think it's Paper Game something. And those are the mushrooms. Well, I, I also got from the same place um, this these bunches of sets that I haven't used yet. And I think I got this one separately. And all of these images are unrelated. There's a hand with a paintbrush, the bus ticket, this calendar circle, and this orb. A quote, this uh, advertisement for India rubber stamps, and this um, dress form type of... It's a lady, but it's she's got measurements or something. So they're all unrelated, but they're really fun to use together. And then um, these other sets, you can get them individually or buy them like all of them. They're all advertised in one listing, and it's from the paper game set or whatever that place is called. I'll look it up and I'll link it below. But all of these sets are in one listing, and you can choose which one you want, or you can purchase the whole lot of them, and I decided to do that because there's just so many fun elements in them. So I, I was using quite a few of these yesterday. Alright, so let's see if I can accomplish anything in this mess that I've got here. Let's use something I haven't used yet. How about that horse's head? That's pretty cool. It's a horse with a with the blinders on. Use my stays on timber brown. I used that for a lot of the stamping that I did last night, but that was pretty dark. So let's see what it looks like. I think that's a little too light. So I'll just lightly tap it on there. Well, it looks a little bit faded there, but it's supposed to look vintage, so that's okay. Um, let's try this ledger. I'm going to look for my ink pad that's, sorry, a more of a tan color. I'm reaching around my tripod. I have soft suede. Let's try that one. This is an older pad, so I don't know how much ink there will be on it. I probably should get some new stamp pads from Stampin' Up. I don't want it to be very dark, so it'll be fine if it's not inked up enough. I think, yeah, I guess I'll put it over here.
This is kind of illegible, but it's fancy writing and it might be French or Latin or something. I'm going to stamp that in black. Oh, I forgot. This is a brand new pad that I just opened. Can't press down on it too hard. It gets really juicy. I tell you, I'm really struggling to find time to get in here this week. I thought I would work a few hours today and then be able to get in here and work on the journals, but I decided to get my hair cut before I came home because it was really way past due to get my hair cut. Shorter than I thought it would be. I told her to take off three inches. Maybe she did, but the shorter my hair is, the curlier it is. So it looks like I lost more like six inches because it's really curly right now, and it's oh, it's still touching my shoulders, but if I straightened it, it would be longer, of course. But anyway, got my hair cut, and then came home and had my lunch, and... I'm trying to think what else I want to put on here. Let's try this. Maybe try this gate circle. Looks like I haven't even opened this one yet. So I got up here ready to start. I was getting my camera ready to start, and then I got a text. Oh, they're connected. I don't think I want to. I just wanted to kind of put a ring around here somewhere. I'll use that for something else. <coughs> Um, I can do it with this. So, anyway, I got up here ready to get started on something, and then my brother sent me a text who, you know, he never texts me. Um, said he was going to be stopping by with my annual cheese. <laughs> he, he, um, years ago started buying I can't remember if it's Gouda or Edam. I always get them mixed up, but it's a big brown ball of cheese in red wax. He gets one for all of his siblings and his parents, my parents. And uh, we get them after Christmas every year. So he was going to drop that off. So I went downstairs and waited. And while he was here visiting with me, my sister texted me and asked if I was home because she and her husband were in the area and they wanted to stop in. So I told David, well, you better hang out here until they get here because he said he had to go to her house and give her her cheese too. So we'll save you a trip. <laughs> <coughs> so I had a really nice visit with my brother and my sister and my brother-in-law and we got cheese. Now I need a little something over on this side, I think. So anyway, um, I'm a little later getting up here than I thought I would be. But that's okay, because these people don't visit me that often, especially my brother. So it was good. And tomorrow, I don't have to work, but my kids are coming over here to have popovers. I think that's good. Um, I don't know if you know what popovers are, but it's a thin batter, kind of like pancake, but it's got eggs and stuff in it. Um, you mix up the batter and then you pour it into the popover cups. It's like a it's like a muffin pan but the popover cups are deep and they're tapered. And when you bake them they puff right up out of the top of the pan. And you take them out 
and you pull them right out of the pan and eat them warm with butter and they are delicious. So this was our traditional breakfast. I used to make, well my dad started it when, when I was a kid, but when my kids were growing up I would make popovers and scrambled eggs and bacon for Christmas morning breakfast every year. And we continued that. Bill and I continued it after the kids were out of the house, but they often came here for Christmas breakfast so they could have popovers. Well, I'm not going to make popovers for myself. They don't um, reheat very well. They they shrivel up once they, once they um, come out of the oven. So my daughter said we had to have some popovers this year. Let's do one of these vintage sheets. And she's off tomorrow and I'm off tomorrow, so we decided we would do popovers tomorrow for lunch, not for breakfast. And I invited my son. He was pretty excited. So I won't have much time in here tomorrow either. But I bought some fruit to cut up and make a fruit salad to go with our popovers. I thought I cut this. I guess I didn't. Well. Anyway. I need a day where I can just, I always have a day before the new year that I plan, make plans for the year, whatever my goals might be in different areas of my life. I just always enjoy doing that and I haven't done it since Bill died because I have, I just, it's been hard for me to think about plans. I'm, I'm wearing a sweater with a zipper and the zipper pull is clinking on my tripod leg. I kept wondering what was making that noise. And I don't know when I'm going to have a day that I have time to do that. This is the first year since Bill died that I actually feel like making a plan, setting some goals. And every day I'm busy. There's always something going on. But I'm going to have to make, make it somewhere. Okay, I'm jabbering a lot today, aren't I? I'm going to take this bus ticket. No, I'm going to take this. The calendar with the... It looks like there's a clock in there. And I don't know, this is just some sort of a sphere. I don't know if it has a name, but there's a clock down in there. And then there's a calendar around it. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna be glad when things settle settle down and there isn't so much stuff happening. Oh, well, that's nice. I hope you can see. All right, what else would I put on here? Look at that top view of an old-fashioned typewriter. That's pretty cool. I'm looking for this one that has the while you were out. Ah, oh, here it is. And I like this. It's a it's like a dotted line. And it says cut here. It's on here crooked, but let's do that. Let's try that one. Try to straighten it out a little bit. That's going to be crooked. And it's upside down. 
supposed to be that way. That's okay. Now I'll use the while you were out. And I will use the soft suede for that. It has felt like spring today. It's been 50 or near 50 for several days now, so all of our snow is melted. I think we're supposed to have snow later next week at some point. But for now, we don't have any, and it's very nice out. It did rain today. And I think I'd like to put a lady on there somewhere. Some sort of a living thing. The deer, the lady, the horse. I haven't used any of those either. Oh, these ladies. These are what I'm looking for. I'll stamp them in my stays on burgundy claret ink. I'm going to have quite a mess to clean up here. My sewing station still has um, all the stuff I had over there for making the ephemera I made the last couple of videos. So, like I said, I have a hard time getting in here. So I haven't been cleaning up. I just come in when I get in here. I just do some crafting, make more mess. I'm going to add stuff to these pieces too. I will add um, little paper clips or eyelets or maybe even bits of lace and stuff. I'm just doing the stamping over here to create a base or something to add something to, but I probably won't do the adding until I start layering and collaging these things. But I think I'm gonna leave this as it is. And I'm not even going to ink because there is a light um, darkening of the edges because it is naturally a vintage piece. So I can leave that as it is. I would like to stamp a bunch of vellum images that I can cut out and have ready to layer too. And I have these different colors of stays on, which is good for vellum because the vellum isn't porous and ink will smear on it. Even even the stays on will smear unless you let it dry. I guess I'll take, I have this piece left over from yesterday. This one didn't come out very good. I'll take this and let's try stamping. Oh, let's do the bus ticket. this in blue. Midnight blue. So if I did like that, that would smear right now. I have to let it dry and then I'll cut it out. The stays on is a permanent ink, so it does stain the, <clears throat> the clear stamps, but it doesn't um, hurt them at all. That's 
fit there. Yeah, we can do this on, on vellum too. I think that would be cool. Scissors matter. I didn't have my little scissors over here, so I started cutting around one of them with this. And it actually, the blade is so, is thick, and it would kind of um, crack the paper. So I brought my little scissors over and it made a huge difference because the blade is thinner and they're nice and sharp and you get a nice cut. So this will be a nice fun layering element somewhere. Let's do, did I bring another one of those envelopes over here? When I was adding the distress paint to my napkin and crackled book covers, I, I um, painted extra paint on these cards or tags. I'm trying to think if I want to stamp something on them, but I, I don't. I don't feel led to at the moment. Well, I got this little envelope I can do. It's a little coin envelope. I think somebody sent this to me. It's really cute. So I might want to glue this down. So I would want to decorate this. But it might be free floating too. So I might want to decorate the back too. for a little scrap. Is, this is an old-fashioned camera stamp. I want something in the background. I think that this... Well, let's do this one while you were out. We didn't ever get to use this one. I was going to say, I think that that ledger stamp is going to come in handy. I think I'm going to be using that a lot. But for this one, let's try this while you were out. I 
Paper Game Company. That's the name of that Etsy store where these these stamps came from. And this one, Paper Game Company. That's the back. They also have washi tape, I think. Oh, and they... I have to show you what else I got from them. Let me see if it's right on my table over here. Yes. I got these. These are not vintage, but they're, they're um, copies of vintage things. So this one says mail order card. It, the printing is Chinese, but I think you get three different designs. So this says Record of Transit, Third Assistant Postmaster General, this is a man here, and Mail Order Card. This is for Watkins. Please deliver or ship to me the following Watkins products. And I have found some vintage Watkins catalogs, little little brochures more than catalogs. And this is from the 60s, this design. And then this is just a postcard. This says 1967. And then it starts over again. And I don't know how many sheets are in it, but... And then this one, I don't remember what it was called in the listing, but these are listed together also, and you can choose from various pads, and I just chose these two. Look at the purple registered receipt. And this one is Groceries Dependable Service, Ditto's Store, Washington Avenue, Hagerstown, Maryland. It's really cute. And then this one. It even spills on it. So, these and those stamps and some washi tapes are available from Paper Game Company. and I will link them below. I don't think I need to do anything else there. Um, I can stamp this little little flag thing that says important right on the flap. So just in case this ends up being a floating card, I'm just going to stamp something on the back. Nothing too involved. Might as well do this. Ah, drop it on it. That might be slightly crooked. See, that's a really cool stamp. I have these coffee dyed strips. I can just stamp some images on them and I like adding just coffee dyed stamped images to projects either just as part of a cluster or envelope decoration or just gluing it right to a page. If you um, 
glue something like this to a page rather than stamping it on the page. It just adds a little more texture because of the coffee dyed. Even if it's glued to a coffee dyed page, the shades will be different and I really like the way it looks. I love these bulbs, so I'm just gonna fill this row up with bulbs. There's no room for another one there. And I'm just going to cut these into a square for now and I can make any adjustments that I want to when I'm ready to use them. Let's do the same thing with this typewriter because it's such a cool typewriter. This says life on the inside. I don't really know what to do with that. Life on the inside of what? Sounds like prison. <laughs> When it is lined. I love saving my scraps of coffee dyed paper and making ephemera with them. Oh, that looks cool. I like that. I like this little script right here. Witnesses. This is a patent drawing and so it has two witnesses signatures and the uh, inventor and the attorney. That's cool. I know there's, I'm not teaching you anything here. I'm just chatting with you while I stamp. So I hope that you're hanging out with me for a little bit. I'll do these alphabet letters here. I'll do another piece with more stamping on it, more like a collage stamp effect before I'm done here. I just really wanted to play with these letters, or these stamps. But I will be glad to get them all cleaned up and put neatly away. Drives me crazy when things are this messy. Which they often are, I should say, usually. What's the point of having a craft room if you can't mess it up? paper here that I got a whole packet of it wrapped in plastic at a uh, antique mall. It's textured. I wouldn't say it's homemade, I don't think, but you can see it's got speckles in it and it's got some texture here. So I'm just going to do something with one of these. Okay, so I have this Berkeley's India Rubber Stamps, and I have another it's a woodblock stamp. It's an advertisement for rubber stamps. Where did it go? I used it yesterday. I think it's woodblock. such 
a mess. I can't even find it. I was going to use them to, um, together. Hmm. Oop, oops, sorry. I got my arm caught in the strap of my camera. Here it is. Now I'm looking for my gentleman, this guy. Yeah. My look how look how little my space is that I'm working in. Get back, get back. They're all creeping in on me. When I rub the ink over it, the texture shows up more. I might end up tearing these other edges, but I can re-ink that if I do. All right, let's start with this stamp. Did you see where I put it? Over here, my goodness. Make sure I have it right side up. Oh, he looks cool with all that texture on the paper. That is cool. I like that. I'm going to add some stenciling to this one. I think I'll just do the polka dots. But what color? green peeled paint not showing up. Let's try it with this. Probably because of that texture it's hard to get the ink on there. That's better. I just want it to be subtle.
school. Well, I think that'll be enough for today. Um, let me show you what we did. In addition to what I did yesterday, which I already showed you. We have this one. We have three of these. A couple of these. Three of these. An envelope. And this. Is that all? Oh, nope. I have that and I have this. I wish his face came out a little better. So this was a lot of fun. I think that I will clear everything up, clean up the stamps and put everything away so that when I do have time to start, get back into working on the journal, I'll have everything cleaned up, everything that's not part of that cleaned up and put away and then I can just concentrate on the journal but I've really had a lot of fun the last couple of days just making ephemera using my stamps using some of my stash of digitals and scraps of scrapbook paper and it's just been really fun and I, I'm glad that you came along and joined me I'll see you again soon bye bye <laughs>